Okay, and we're live. Hey. All right, hello everyone. Thank you again for joining us. And um, yeah, here we go again. So uh, <laughs> we're just going to have a pretty easy night tonight. We're going to wing it a bit. Um, so please bring all your questions. And uh, if we are, we are also going to have a bit of an open mic night. So that means that if you want, want to join us, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Um, so we'll just go around the board again and just uh, reintroduce ourselves and let you know who's here. And uh, so I'm DC from DC Learning to Live. Okay. Um, and it, those of you who know my story, you know I'm still battling with uh, uh, blood cancer and, um, you know, doing, doing pretty well one day at a time and uh, carnivore diet is keeping me healthy and fit. Um, and Dave. Yeah. And g'day, everyone. I'm Dave and um, from uh, the channel No Carb Life. And, uh, yeah, I've been carnivore now for, feels like a long time, almost two years now. So, yeah, it's coming up in two years and uh, feeling great. Uh, Lindy. Yeah, Lindy, Limitless Lindy. And uh, I have a channel too. And uh, I started my journey just over two years ago as well, uh, two out two years, three months, and um, managed to lose weight. I've lost uh, nearly over 150 kilos. It's a bit embarrassing to actually have to report that. I'll say that. I've lost a whole person and a half, I think. <laughs> but I'm still um, going. And <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think that's you should be embarrassed about that. I think that's that's an, a, a great a, a achievement. Don't yeah. ever be embarrassed yeah. about that. But no, it's yeah. been a great journey. I finally got the off switch that I never had in my life. Uh, food freedom and uh, enjoying my carnival journey. So, yeah, this is a life, yeah. life change. Been great. Excellent. Yeah, very good. Um, myself, my journey, I have been um, low-carb, uh, keto at least, uh, for nine and a half years plus um, and strict carnival just one year this month. So, um, yeah, please, uh, if you have any questions and if you feel like joining us tonight, we're going to have an open mic very soon. So I will let you know when that starts. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to um, post everyone's channel here. So if you are not already uh, subscribed, go check them out. Um, I'm sure most of you know Dave. He's got a big channel. And uh, Limitless Lindy, their story is getting around pretty quick. So there we go. There's all the links. All right. Cheers. Alrighty, so uh, let's see. How did we all start this journey anyway? Um, I know a lot of people uh, listening will have very many reasons. You know, there's always there's always a reason why you start something new, why you you, you try to. I mean, you you're trying to find a better way to to eat or to to um, better your health. So what? Um, what brings you to your to your uh, health journey? Do you think? Um, let's start with Dave. How did you get started, and why? Why did you get started? So for me, getting started was about getting rid of the weight, but it really came down to the sugar. Getting rid mm. of that, but also getting rid of alcohol, and I I needed to do something. Otherwise, I, I had a feeling like in a year's time, I'd be going back to the doctor and the doctor would be saying, you know, you know that liver you've got that was hanging on by a thread? Well, the thread's now broken. Um, and I, I didn't want that. So, um, yeah, I, uh, 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 that's what pushed me to keto and then keto quickly morphed into carnivore. Mm. Yeah, it tends to do that, doesn't it? You know, when you're keto, keto is kind of like... Uh, the the like the teenager and uh, carnivore is kind of like the adult, you know, you sort of progress into that when you mature yeah, a bit. And, 
the 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 thing is it just it's just so much easier once you once you understand that you you can just get rid of all the vegetables it's like oh okay i'm quite happy with this eggs and beef all the time i'm 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 set yeah yeah mm. yeah that's right yeah it makes it it does make it so much easier yeah lindy yeah, for me, it was my 50th birthday. I just turned 50 and, yeah, because around 350 kilos and had one foot in the grave, I was ready to die. Like I just, I was so depressed and um, every diet failed. I'd failed lap band surgery. I just felt like a failure as a human overall and thought, you know, I was looking at my two beautiful daughters thinking, they need their mum. I need to be here for them. I remember when my mum was diagnosed with cancer that um, how empty I felt just thinking I was going to lose my mum and here I am slowly killing myself and thinking my girls are going to be without a mum soon. I need to do something. So I found Carnival and uh, jumped in two feet first. There's no little steps for me. I had to do the full Monty and jump straight in and, and um, give this a go. It was my last hope. So um i did struggle for six months until i reached out for coaching and um got a bit of support helped me deal with all my emotional baggage the issues that i had changed my bad habits and uh coaching sort of helped me through all of that and i've been able to turn my life around and get my life back so it's like i've been given a second chance but my daughters were my big why i just didn't want to leave them alone so yeah 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 and you've done so well too it's been amazing yeah. you know seeing your journey um thank you <laughs> it, it really is a big achievement you know it's it um like you said like it's changing habits too it's you know bad habits is what uh, lead us to these these issues you know um for you is weight um yeah. and of course you know other issues that came with the weight you know um and the same with Dave, you know, with alcohol as well, just another bad habit. It's all about changing your habits, isn't it? You know, you know, change, yeah. you're swapping out the, the bad habits for good habits, for healthy habits. You know? hmm. So, and it's, uh, I think it's, um, like you said, having a coach is, having a coach is uh, very helpful, especially if you don't know what you're doing, um, when, especially when you get started. Um, but even when you, you know, sometimes, we, I mean, these days, I mean, if you look at the, the food industry, um, even when you think you're doing everything right, you, you still get sick because it's, it's just so much crap information out there, you know? So that's, that, that's true. It's like, it's so overwhelming. Like you've got the CEO of Kellogg's on the TV talking about how everyone should just eat cereal for dinner and, ah. you know, mixed messages coming from all over the spectrum and the medical profession and pharmaceutical industry. And yeah. So you've got to have pretty strong convictions. Like you've got to kind of really right. kind of point, point to, in one direction and go, I'm just going to stay the distance and, and do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, there's a good saying, I forget. Um, it goes um, something like this. It's like, it, it's not, it's not routines or is it, or is it uh, it's not luck or something or something or discipline that builds someone or makes someone successful. What makes someone successful are their habits. Okay, and their habits make your life, you know, or make or it's your habits that make someone successful, you know. So if you if you get the right, if you make sure that you have the right habits, you'll be successful. You know, it's more about it's not so much about um, motivation either. You know, people are always going on about you know what keeps you motivated, what you know, um, what motivates you, sort of thing. Motivation is is BS. All right, it it will get you started. It'll last an hour if you're lucky, you know. Um, it's discipline, you know. It's discipline that will get you there. And it's all about consistency over time, you know. So yeah. the, the discipline to...
do that, to stay on that every day and to keep going. And even when you have a bad day, you know, follow it up with a good one, you know, get straight back onto it. So, you know, I always tell people, like, just don't worry about motivation. You know, just just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. doesn't matter. You're going to have days where you feel really low. You just don't have the energy, don't have the motivation, so to speak. But do it anyway. It might not be a great day, but it'll still be a step in the right direction. You know? Hmm. It's all money in the bank. Yeah. You also need patience. You can't expect everything to just turn around and be all well and dandy within a few days. It can take weeks, even months, depending on the person. Years, yeah. yeah. It just depends on how how unhealthy or how much healing your body needs to do. And most of us don't even well. know what's going on internally. So yeah. you can't expect a quick fix and you shouldn't be doing carnival for weight loss, which I know now. It's all about the healing first. And when your body feels safe, it will let go of the weight when it's ready. And you will. Exactly. I believe that I'll get to my goal weight, whatever that is. I have no idea what number that is, but my body will just stop when it's ready, I believe. Mm. So, um yeah. yeah, on that on there. that point, Lindy, um, you know, the, I, I can't remember where this saying's from, but it was like you don't lose weight to get healthy; you get healthy to lose. Uh, sorry, is that right? You don't lose yeah. weight to get healthy; you get healthy to lose weight. Yeah, that's the right way around, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, another way, another way to say it is, um, like, you don't. Um, I mean, you, you don't. I mean, just because you're slim as well, it doesn't mean you're healthy either. You know. Um, exactly. And even when you're lean, like I was, when I was diagnosed, I was very lean. You know, and I was, I was very fit. I was very fit. Like the day I left Japan, I deadlifted 260 kilos. You know, uh, I was, you know, I was in the gym the day before I left. Like I was. You know, it's on it all the time. You know, just being um, worrying about your fitness or, or health or, or your um, like being lean, that sort of stuff. That's not that's not always healthy. You know, uh, you know, yeah. Take care of your health first, and everything else will follow. So, I just saw a great comment here. Carnival for eight months was two hundred and forty-five pounds down to one hundred and eighty-nine. Very good. So, you know. What's that? A good Yay, 56 pounds, yeah. No, nice it's work, Frank. Awesome. No more swelling. And uh, now I work out twice twice a day, 64. Excellent. Very good. Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, that's great work, man. Well done. Um, yeah, so, I mean, anyone in Brisbane? Yeah, mate, I'm in Brisbane, or just north of it anyway. Um, yeah. So, when you feel sick, you don't want to exercise, you don't want the movement, you're very no. negative with everything, so you do need to get your health so that you you want to do exercise. Like I actually want yeah. to jump on a rebounder now and go out and walk around and go hiking, do things like that. Before I, I could just do it on tv i just watch it and think i wish that was my life there was no (laughs) what's he laughing at what have you found (laughs) i know i'm just laughing when you said i used to just watch it on tv i did i lived my life (laughs) yeah i just watched tv and that was my my, my exercise for the day was watching other people on tv do it (laughs) exactly well i didn't have a life I've got one now yeah. and I love my life now. I'm getting out there and, and living my own life. I don't need to need the box anymore, although I do enjoy my married at first sight. <laughs> yeah, the rest is all good. No, I love getting out there now and living my life. But when you're unwell, you don't want to do anything. No, that's right. You know, and it, when you're sick for a long period of time as well, when you, you're stuck in bed for years, years at a time, like I mean, you were Lindy. I was too. It's um, it's so damn miserable. It's like it's depressing waking up. It's you know, it's like everything is pointless. Like there's just no, 
um, there's no point to waking up. There's no point to getting up and yeah. having a shower or, you know, getting changed or, you know, just nothing felt like it was worth doing, you know. So it's, you know, to go out and go for a walk or exercise or anything like that, it just felt like what was the point, you know. There's, especially like it, when they keep, when the so-called experts keep telling you, like, it's only going to get worse, you know, it's only going to get worse from here. Like, it's like, why bother? You know, you, you can't fight it. You, there's nothing you can do about it, you know. And that's what that's what really um, bugs me about you know the, this whole obesity is genetic bull, you know BS and there's nothing you can do about it. So they they're basically just telling you to give up. There's nothing you can do. Just accept being unhealthy, you know. And like we were talking about the other yeah. day um, with Lindy and Todd, it's like you know we we're talking about how how many people the the medical system has killed over the you know because they I mean they actually are labeled like the third biggest killer in the world. But the fact is, you know, the food industry, how much, how many people have, has the food industry killed with, with BS information like that? Like it's all genetic. Mm. It's utter garbage. Yeah. 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 It's uh, very, very sad. <laughs> this is funny as a joke here. Yeah. Uh, was a carnivore's worst nightmare. Oh, I've had a few of those where I actually feel I actually eat carbs in my in my dreams, and I wake up horrified that I've gone off plan. <laughs> yeah, the answer: <laughs> a vegan buffet. <laughs> I, you know, my, my worst would be nightmare, my worst nightmare. My worst nightmare would be finding myself needing to go to hospital and stay there for you know three, four, five days a week, something like that. And yeah. while I'm in hospital, I'm stuck with that kind of food that they're giving me and they're trying to shove a statin down my throat and things like that. That's a, that's a nightmare. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It is a nightmare, you know, and being stuck in there a lot longer is, you know, being stuck in the medical system, that is a nightmare. That is absolutely brutal on anyone. And getting out of it, that, that is tough. It's really hard and it's something that everyone – this is what I keep saying to people, like get yourself healthy. Don't worry about your weight. Worry about your health and then you will gain back your independence. And that That is the key. That is so much more important than anything else that we should be focused on getting back our, our own independence from pharmaceuticals, from the medical system, from the hospitals, everything like that. Just stay away from it. If you are, if you are healthy, you don't need to rely on going to the pharmacy and getting drugs every every week or and so on. You know, it's so important. It's so much more important than worrying about your damn weight. You know, and like Lindy said, if you when you get when you your body when you restore your body, your when you restore your health, the weight will come off by itself you don't have to do anything your body knows exactly what it is doing if you are feeding it the right diet you mm. know? yeah so if i could just share a story about that on along those lines dc um i spoke to a i spoke to a lady um a couple of days ago she started having some um serious joint issues and skin issues and stuff like that um in 2017 and for about six years the medical system messed her around and were like we're not sure what it is try this drug we are oh, we're not sure no that one's not working try this one and it was like yeah. just pulling different drugs so out basically of the bag. she's a guinea pig yeah, yeah. And six years later, she goes on carnivore, gone. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what a medical system is like. You know, they treat you like you're an experiment. When you go into the hospital system, you are, they experiment on you. You're like a lab rat, you know. Uh, I was in there for so long, like, and you, you have absolutely no privacy at all. They're just, you know, it's... um. They basically dissect you, you know. 
Mm. That's horrible. And they try anything on you, so. Yeah, that's a good aid. Yeah. Yeah, you get healthy to lose weight. You don't lose weight to get healthy. Yeah, exactly. That's we just said before. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's that's what it's all about, you know. Um, just look at some of these comments. Yeah, you know, two big scapegoats to the, uh, of the poor doctor is it's genetic and it's unknown. Yeah. You know, like... Basically, it's unknown. They don't know what they're talking about, in other words. Um, and, you know, doctors, GPs especially, they're, they're pretty much just trained to um, look at the symptoms that will lead you to the drug. And that's all it's all about. It's all about leading you to a drug. Yeah. You know, that's, the, that's their education. That's the sum of all of their education. They spend like a day on, ed on nutrition. Their job is not to get you off medications, it's to keep you on it. And it also to keep you coming back to them. It's not just about keeping you on pharmaceuticals. Keeping you coming back to them keeps you a returning customer for the, for the GP mm. as well. There's no incentive for them to get you off drugs. Yeah. And the, the key thing that shows you they just they don't care and they want to keep you on the drugs is even when it's at the point where they say, well, it's unknown, they they don't then go maybe let's try changing something in your diet they never get yeah. to that point it's crazy yeah yeah mm. that's right yeah. Diet's a vet can mentioned. Do it, but a doctor can't yeah 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 that's right yeah like that sandra saying they're just practicing you know <laughs> they they haven't quite got it there yet <laughs> hey graham how you doing mate Good to see you. Hi, Graham. <laughs> hey, Graham. So, all right. So, um, yeah, open mic night tonight. So we're going to have uh, invite anyone in who wants to come and join us. Okay. So I'm going to give you a link right now. There it is. If you'd like to – oh, hang on. That's not the right link. That's the wrong link. That's Dave's link. So here we go. If you would like to come and join us, come and have a chat. And if you're shy, you can I leave the camera off. I used to do that. <laughs> camera off and just talk. We'd love to meet you and, and just yeah, share your story. It'd be lovely to meet some new carnivals. Here's, a good, here's an interesting comment. Okay. Uh, hey, Copper's Kitchen, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. I asked this. I asked my specialist after after the stroke if I had to quit sugar. He did not even reply on it. Yeah, the, and this is a specialist. <laughs> it's a, it's unreal. You know, these are the people that we're supposed to, um, you know, trust our lives with. You know, and this is this is the uh, how they treat you. You know, it's. It's, it's so wrong. It's not funny. Okay, we've got someone trying the... to join us. Oh, cool. Just disconnected. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so disconnected. Okay. So, all right, we'll see what they see if they come back. Oh, we've got a question there from Josephine. Got a question? Here we go. All right. Um, What's the best thing so far that you have that you all have noticed since doing carnival? Less pain, feeling like leaving the house more. Good question. How about you, Dave? Um, no go. arthritis anymore. Yeah, the arthritis oh, going. Hey, Jeannie. The uh, hello, hey. hello. Uh, hey. Yeah, no arthritis anymore. I can run up and down the stairs. Um, it's amazing. Lindy, how about you? Ah, oh, definitely mobility. <laughs> I've got my mobility back and walk around the yeah. house, do things, get out of the house, fit behind the wheel of the car, like, and just the, my mental state. I was very depressed, didn't want to be here anymore, and now I'm loving life, embracing new challenges, my whole outlook. You're another one. More positive. Hey. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Ben. That's good. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Hey, Lindy. <laughs> hey. Another one. 
IDC. Wow. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, wow. Hello. Thanks for joining us, everyone. All right. Well, we'll do some introductions in a minute. Um, but we'll start with this question. Uh, what's the best thing so far you've noticed with uh, Carnival? All right. Um, so anyone else want to give an answer? <laughs> oh, someone's still watching on the YouTube. Oh yeah, just to mute the YouTube or close that window down. Yeah. Okay, so we've got ID Genie, BK Ben, and Sandra. Okay, Hi. you want to introduce yourselves? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, perfectly. Hi. I'm Sandra from the UK, and um, excuse me, and um, got introduced to Lean Seven Care of um, Anthony Vayet, and oh, yeah. I've lost kilograms since the fifth of January, and I feel great. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations! Well done. Yay. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Excellent. you. Okay, uh, BK Ben. Can you yeah. tell us about yourself? Well, um, I'm uh, from Belgium, uh, and uh, since I started uh, the keto and then after the carnivore, I lost uh, 45 kilos, and uh, I'm also uh, medication-free from uh, from sugar and statins, uh, and also uh, painkiller-free as well. So, and that improved my life a lot better. Yeah. Excellent. That's fantastic. Good Thanks to hear it, mate. Yeah. Well done. Yay. Very good. Nice. And next we've got the Genie. Okay, I'm Genie. I'm an Aussie from Brisbane. Um, oh, good on you, mate. Yeah, Khan, I, I must admit I've been a bit naughty lately, so I need to slap myself on the wrist. But um, I can't more. It's, uh, for one thing, I was never a great fan of cooking generally so taking all that out is fantastic um yeah. the um depression anxiety that has helped i used to be like you lindy not weight wise i didn't have a lot of weight to lose but i was so depressed i couldn't see the point of life either for a period yeah. of death. um but i got off my thyroid medication which the doctor, of course, said you probably have to be on this forever, you know. Um, and just saving time, yeah, the usual more energy, the, the whole bit that other people say, you know. Um, yeah. And it helped. It's it helped, like I had a breakup just before I started this, and thank God I found Carnival then because that helped me. Um, because when I have a heartache, I get into bad eating, etc. So that helped me curtail that, stuff myself with meat. And luckily, I've always loved red meat. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you know, that's, you know, I mean, the, the most obvious thing that I think that most people benefit from is just how easy it is. You know, you, you don't have to worry about preparing such big meals and you know just chuck a steak on the grill or whatever and it's so much easier time wise energy wise and uh yeah it just feels great doesn't it and yeah you do get a lot more energy as long as you're eating enough fat and things like that so yeah, yeah that's really good yeah shopping for all the veggies and trying to work yeah. out what goes with what and chopping them all up and you know I mean, I'd have a wine yeah. and play loud music, but it's so much easier now. It's just, you know, like... Yeah, plus, you know, you end up throwing half of it away, like veggies yeah. and fruit. You spend, like, half an hour just trying to find the fresh stuff, you know, because yeah. most of the supermarkets, you know, half of it's going off before you even take it home anyway. Oh, uh, and then crappy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's so yeah. easy. And, I mean, even the old guy, Carnival, Mitch, he was cooking his burger or whatever is in the air fryer was all up. It was like 15 minutes. And for me, it's like, not nah, just whack it on the pan. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, 
just guess guess it you know um that does me so. yeah uh, i love my air fryer because there's only one plate you just in the air fryer then in the plate and yeah, that's sure. it there's no dishes it's very easy i just yeah, press yeah. the time i go off and do what i want and it gives yeah, me when it's enough. ready <laughs> i'm very yeah. lazy oh, are you? In there. Oh, no it's it's cool don't get me wrong <laughs> I do yeah. my mince beef in the Ninja Foodie um, on the steamer. Okay. okay. Cool. Oh. oh, wow. Is yeah, it? Because, because I, 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 I can't eat steak because um, I've got no teeth. <laughs> so I have to do the... Um, <laughs> You're not alone. Beef. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, Got to cut it really small. Huh? Got to cut it really small. <laughs> the mince beef, no, the mince beef, I, I have it normal, but um, the steak, because I tried to rebuy re last year, I didn't like it. So, oh. um, mince beef is my um, number one. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, easy. That's, as Ada said to me before, mince mince beef is just like lots of little steaks anyway. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. So, is it difficult to be carnivore in the UK, Sandra? No, we've got all types of meat. Um, I have connections with Kimber's Farm. They do steak, they do pork, they do elk, no, they do um, venison, um, they do mutton, because I'm a Jamaican and we love our curried mutton, especially at weddings and things like that. So oh, yeah. curry goat as well, we like goat as well. I can get that from Kimber's Farm. I love my oxtail. But it's hard to get oxtail in the city. But um, yeah. in Kim at Kimber's Farm and such like, you can get oxtail for about thirteen pounds in UK money for one kilogram. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Hey, well, uh, BK Ben, Belgium. Yeah. Is it difficult to be carnivore over there? In Belgium, uh, not really, because uh, the, ma the majority of the Belgian are still uh, the Burgundic uh, type uh, as well. But of course, yeah, sometimes it uh, depends uh, that the meat is uh, being expensive, but it depends what kind of meat uh, does you buy. Just if you buy the, the mince or the ground beef, that can be quite cheap. But if you go for steak or, or, or ribeye steak, that can be quite expensive here. And I buy no local, uh, just buy local uh, farming butcher no, and uh, I get it no, the average uh, price is no at 12, 12 and a half euros a kilo I paid. So that's a um, very decent price. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Yeah. And I mean, uh, also, also uh, pork and, and chicken, I like. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Very good. I mean, there's always a lot of, um, like, pretty, I mean, meat's pretty expensive here in Australia, but you can always get a cheaper alternative, you know. So, I, I like that. That's good. Mm. Um, okay. So, I had a few comments here. Jonathan was saying that, uh, yeah, carnival in the UK is better than anywhere else in the world, but probably the worst for dining out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say, I'd say, um, dining out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would say, um, dining out. I think Japan would be the best place to be carnival. I think. What do you think, Dave? um yeah and i i actually just had a discussion um with the lady that's been to japan recently from europe and um she she said she couldn't believe how easy it was yeah just like yeah. nearly every restaurant can cater to you as a carnivore so yeah yeah wow yeah nice. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i have been like uh so many different places like in japan like you have yakiniku um which is like a just a barbecue buffet you, all you can eat for a certain amount of time and it's very cheap in japan like some of them some of them we went to actually um they also have another thing that's called shabu shabu and you sort of you boil the meat in the in the water and um you know they that's all you can eat as well but there's one in sendai it's uh, 20 dollars for a five hour buffet so all you can eat for five hours you know for 20 dollars yeah wow. that's amazing and there's all kinds of beef all right 
Um, That's awesome. And yeah, like different cut, uh, cuts of meat as well, chicken, and, and uh, you, you can also get seafood, of course, as well. But there was also up in Hokkaido, yeah, it wasn't a, a buffet. Well, it was also a buffet, but it, was, it wasn't specifically um, what they call yakiniku, it was what they called uh, Genghis Khan and named after Genghis Khan and they they were fantastic it's like going to but they put us in a, their own private sort of uh, buffet room uh, they're at barbecue table and everything like that and they just the meat just never stopped they just kept coming and it, it, there was so much meat like I was so full I didn't eat for the entire day the next the following day like that's how good it was it was, uh, you know, it's so cheap. It's amazing. You know, Japan is, uh, and it has a reputation here. Everyone keeps saying, like, how expensive J- Japan is. And that, honestly, it's one, the cheapest country I've ever lived in, really. And food is wow. fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I'd be there yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's what I said. And I said to my wife, you know, if we can get, if I can get healthy enough, we can move back to Japan. I'll be going to um, a yucky nigga every day. That's I'll be, I'll be set one <laughs> one big meal a day. That's it. <laughs> Don't worry about any plates, dishes, or anything. No shopping. <laughs> no no washing dishes. Nothing. <laughs> yep. So cheap. Yeah. Probably next that place. What's that? Funny name. You said yucky nigga. Yucky nigga. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, we call knickers yeah. underwear over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, knickers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we've got another one here. So, so oh, that would be yucky, oh, yeah. yucky knickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that what vegans wear? <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Hi, Jane. Hello. 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 Yes, we are. How are you doing? Good. We can't see you though. I can't quite hear you. I'm Mitchell Freeway and Perth, so that's not going to happen. I'm not putting the camera on. You'll just see my uh, car roof. Ah. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Fair enough. Very can you good. Still hear me? Yes, we can hear you off and on. <laughs> that's good. I don't know if it's um, coming through with the volume. Oh, okay. No worries. I wanted yeah. to say the um, Japanese food is totally up my alley. I love it. It's so good. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, the, the other good thing about uh, yeah, Japan is the variety. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think anyone mm. can, can always find something that they like in Japan. You know, um, the variety of food. Like they had literally, they have absolutely everything, you know, that you can eat, and uh, you know, all kinds of seafood, all kinds of um, ruminant animals as well. So, I don't think there's anything. Um, oh, sure. I mean, there's actually about where I used to live in Sendai. There was a butcher just about a hundred meters from me. They had all kinds of exotic meats from all around the world too. To, um, they have uh, kangaroo meats, crocodile meats. Uh, buffalo, uh, all sorts of stuff, you know. So, yeah, really cool. I remember when I was there in um, 2016, my partner and I went to the um, old Skiji fish market before it closed, and that was awesome, just having all this yeah. fresh seafood and massive oyster was almost a meal in itself. And yeah. um, mm-hmm. another time we're over in Osaka, where you're living, right, Dave? That's right. And, uh, yeah, and we had we went to this um, pork restaurant, and it was the most sensational pork we'd ever eaten. And I just love the way like the Japanese are always proud of like their different regions and their types of meats and things. And and you know there was like a little write up about every little region and the type of pork that they were using from that region, and we just loved it. It was the best. And the funny thing is, is they had this like sign at the front. I think they call it Hingrish when it's like really funny. <laughs> Like the, you know, the translation is like it's a bit whack, and it was like something about the life and beauty and love of meat, his health, and all this sort of thing. We're like, yeah, we yeah, totally yeah. get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 
so I don't know if I anyone's that's ever heard tame. of. Yeah, that's pretty tame. If you ever hear, uh, if you ever saw the, um, the old TV show, The Iron Chef, like yeah, like, um, yeah, in Japan, like the translation of that the way they would um, explain like what the the dish felt like when they were eating it was so funny. It was absolutely comical. It's like <laughs> they were so dramatic about how this how this food was like. It was so amazing. It was like dancing on my tongue and all this sort of stuff. It's crazy dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. I, I love that show. I, I love the Iron Chef. Yeah, it, it was funny as hell. But I mean, always good cooks on there. Always, um, it's kind of interesting to watch the competition. You know. Mm. I just got to answer this question. Um, learning to live. Uh, are you going to regenerate in Melbourne next month? No, I won't be going. Um, yeah, I, I try to avoid Melbourne as much as I can, um, but it's not in the budget for me either. <laughs> Shit today. Not, not because not because Lindy lives there, but oh, <laughs> for many other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> because other reasons, other reasons. Yeah. yeah, like I was actually I was actually born in Sydney, but I moved to Brisbane because it was too close to to Melbourne. <laughs> Just getting <laughs> What is Australia like, guys? Hot. Um, well, it's hot at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's summer here, so it, it's quite warm still. But, um, is there yeah. a lot of people? Is there a lot of people my color in, in Australia? Yeah, okay, so, um, I mean, you have the Aborigine people, you have, uh, well, you know, Australia is a very, um, cultural mix. Yeah, so it's mm. sort of everyone here, really. Um, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Japanese here. Yeah. Do you have There's a Jamaican restaurant over there? Jamaican restaurants? Um, yeah. I, 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 I couldn't been, say. So, oh, I've never been one. I've never been to one, I don't think. Not a lot, but I love making I can't chicken. I have one. I used to, anyway. Yeah. I uh, drink like thanks jerk chicken. Yeah, I I couldn't tell you to be honest. Um, I don't eat out at all in Australia. Um, for many reasons, I just don't. I find it overpriced and very lacking in quality. Uh, doesn't matter really where you go. Um, yeah. So I, I I haven't eaten out in Australia for I don't know maybe I would say maybe once a year in the last. I haven't done it at all for the last five years, at least. So, mm. Yeah, I always prepare before and never go out. Or if I go out, I'm I'm never hungry. So, yeah. Mm. It is hard to um, get. Even pubs are so expensive these days; it's ridiculous. But it's hard to get yeah. a good meat meal at a reasonable price. You're paying through the nose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean. Like you could go to it, like you could go to a, a, a pub or like a hotel, um, like 20 years ago and get like a, a good steak meal for five bucks, you know, five, well, ten know. bucks. Those days are long gone, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a long time ago, <laughs> but you know, like now it's like I don't know, like even at a, at a local pub, oh, just give yeah, me a, yeah, like, yeah. a cheap rump steak is like 30 40 dollars. So, <laughs> Mm. Yeah, 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 and it's so, not as yeah. nice when you make it at home. It tastes much nicer right. at home than as the restaurant. You sort of think I should have just stayed yeah. home and made it myself. It would have been much nicer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Steak, yeah. steak and fries here in Belgium is the average price of between twenty-five and thirty euros, and for me, it's cheaper to make it myself, but without the price. So. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Plus, it's not cooked in, yeah, not cooked in seed oils or anything else like that. Yeah, and ruined exactly. uh, sauces and whatnot. So yeah. uh, it's much healthier. It tastes much better, and just value for money. It's just easier to do it at home um, in mm -hmm. here in Australia at least. So, mm. yeah. can I How about you, you Dave? quickly jump in and say um, thank you to Jonathan and Kimberly for the super chats? Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, I cook you. my I cook my steak and pork and pork fat now recently, and the taste oh, is a lot awesome. better than I do it in butter. I still have the real butter as well, 
and uh, then the sauce I use that's uh, that's from from the pork fat and uh, and the leftover sauce from from the steak and that's so tasty. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. also the pink salt, also the pink salt and a little bit no. of pepper, of course. <laughs> yeah. The wow. pink salt is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, mineral salts are fantastic and you know and that's another great thing, you know, it's always you know salt's always been demonized as you know, same as usual. But um, the great thing about waking up and finding that you know, carnivore is actually healthy, you know, salt. Have as much salt as you want. It's fantastic. What salt should I get in the UK, guys? Can What's you get that? molden salt? Molden salt's quite good. M O L D E N. Yeah. No, M A L D O N. Oh, yeah. M A L. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. yeah. M A L D O N. I'm using it at the moment. It's pretty good. There's like flakes of salt. It's really nice. It's delicious, okay. isn't it? I'm, I'm having for dinner. I'm having a um, grass-fed and finished Scotch steak. I might have a couple and a crayfish Ooh. that my partner got Ooh. on a dive the other day. Ooh. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky like that. He goes and gets like bluefin tuna. He gets it all fresh from the ocean Ooh. himself. It's fantastic. Oh, We've nice. had some great skippy nice. and uh, jew fish and all sorts. So. I feel very blessed with that. That's yeah. really special yeah. to have that. I that always have good. to have my red meat, though. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'm just not good. satiated. Yeah. So yeah. The, all the um, all the seafood's like dessert, but it's just beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Seafood's great dessert. You know, like when, mm. when I'm in Japan, like I'll, I'll have a great big steak and then like um, sashimi tuna is a great dessert. You know, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Otoro um, is my favorite. Oh, my Lord, it's so good. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Um, here's a comment from Jonathan. Uh, Sandra, uh, sell the Grande or Celtic Grey Salt is the best in the UK. I got that one as well, the Celtic Grey Salt. That's also a good one. Well, say that again, please, um, um, Pete. Yeah, hang on Can a second. Can you say that again, please? There you go. Celtic Grey Salt or Celde Grande? Yeah. Uh, Celtic, I'll take I'll, I'll take the Celtic one. I, I can remember that one the most. All right. All right. Uh, question: Who has made Carnival Pizza? Anyone? No, no not Never. yet. No. Huh? No. no. I did a flatbread. I did. I've done a flatbread and then just put like slow cooked um, beef and brisket and bits on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't um myself I don't try to imitate junk food. No, uh, I don't. I don't see the I don't no. see the point. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good I prefer not to. Yeah. 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 It's there's I mean you're trying to give up bad habits and yeah. replace them with good healthy habits and mm. trying to trying to you know trying to mimic junk foods with you know it's just going back to the bad habits you know um so for me i don't i don't do it I'm not saying i mean some people you know might float their boat but you know for me i just i'm, I'm not and like we said before one of the, the greatest things about carnival is just how easy it is to cook a steak and just be done with it so why, why, why over that's what yeah. i was going to say I'm, I'm not keen on getting back into complicated cooking arrangements it's like no <laughs> bug that <laughs> so true yeah. i love the simplicity i love it i love just yeah. chucking something in the pan or in yeah. the oven or in my instant yeah. pot and then that's it it's done yeah mm, no measuring yeah. nothing it's great are you yeah, i right. used to be yeah. it yeah i used to be a i used to be an onion addict onions to everything oh. i used to add any onion to anything but now, no desire for it at all. Yeah. I don't yeah, miss it neither. When you're satiated, like on carnival, you don't, you just, I just don't feel like anything else. I don't, I don't miss any of that food at all, you know. Um, that's a good thing. And like I said, like, why try and overcomplicate it? Mm. I thought I couldn't live without chili, onion and garlic. 
but I am, <laughs> you know. I, I'm no, it's no problem. doing okay with that, so, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If, you can, if you can handle it, do it. If you can handle it, do it. That's, that's true. no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have any trouble with it, there's no reason yeah. to cut it out. I mean, exactly. if you like having onions and garlic, as, as long as you don't have any trouble with it, there's, I mean, you don't, mm. you can still eat it. Uh, mm. I just don't. I just don't see the need. I I don't see the the need to overcomplicate my meals. You know, when all I need is a steak, that's all I need to eat. So it's yeah. just a time thing, really. Um, it's a funny comment here. Last time in Brisbane, the steak was awful. No fat and too thin, and too expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get very thin cuts of meat here. It's very lean. All the the fat is usually on the outside, and most people here just are fat phobic. And like I used to be fat phobic, and you just, they cut it all off, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Something really cool happened here the other week. So I like getting um, T-bone steaks from Woolies because it's quick and easy. But um, they had they had some out. It was either last week. I think it was last week, or maybe just the week before. And um, but they were really fatty, like all the marbled fatting and the cap, fat caps as well. And because of that, I think they knocked the price down by $5 a kilo. So I just went and, like, yeah. wiped out all my local bullies with, <laughs> with <laughs> fatty t <tea bugs. laughs> nice. told, Yeah, and I told my mum about it and she went to her neck of the woods and did the same thing because she, <laughs> she started eating uh, more animal-based now as well, which is great. So, oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. It's great Jane. when you can influence those around you. Absolutely. Jane? Yeah. Can I have a question? I, I sure. weigh 104 I weigh 104 kilogram, yeah? And I'm eating 200 kilogram uh, no, 200 grams of animal protein, 100 for the pack number 1 of the minced beef and 100 for pack number 2 of the minced beef. That comes to 200 grams so that's 200 pounds in weight which i can get to is that okay for the for the moment um i i would guess it's okay if you're feeling satiated yeah um, i am i've never i've never really been one for measuring things and mm. basically until i feel full and like like uh, Anthony Chafee says, you know, like I'll eat until I'm kind of like, uh, I'm done with this. And I think yeah. if, you, if you're at that point, then you're doing okay. Um, yeah, because what it is, I never, when I started listening to your show last year, I never used to eat enough um, animal protein. And um, uh, because of what um, Anthony said to me recently, not, you know, in, of, of the Lean 7, I'm not eating enough animal protein that's when i said right i'm going to have 100 grams in the morning and 100 grams in the afternoon with a two pack <laughs> and, and they, they fill me up they do fill me up well yeah, yeah and good. when i spoke to when i spoke to anthony um the first interview i did with him he was telling me that basically the best way to work it out is one gram of protein per centimeter of height yeah yeah but that's yeah. that's the minimum Okay. Yeah. All right. That's your absolute minimum. Yeah, because okay. I I should be, cause according to that I'm one five zero. Yeah, so I'm having mm. two hundred now. I'm having fifty gram over. Well, no, you're, that's pro fine. you're probably doing the right thing, as DC says. Yeah. That was the minimum. So yeah. Yeah. So you probably when, doing when you work thing. out when you work out uh, if you're talking about for weight loss. Okay, you you, you want to work out. Um, the amount you want for your um, your goal weight, okay? Yeah. But when they, like, for example, when, like we're saying one centimeter per, uh, one gram per centimeter in height, some people will also calculate it on um, one, like uh, two grams per kilo of body weight or of mm. uh, like goal body weight, okay? But that is your minimum protein intake, minimum. All right. Yeah, so my, you need to my, have at least that. Yeah, because my first goal weight is um to get to fourteen stones. You see, that's that's two hundred pounds, isn't it? Is that something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, that's why I'm having two because I'm sixteen 
point something now so I can do those yeah. two stones without going too OTT, if you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jonathan, he, he's a nutritionist as well. He's making a good point. You're almost certainly under eating fat. Right? It's not just carnivore is not just a high protein diet it's a high fat diet and this what we really are we're not i mean we do need proteins we need you know proteins for many things but we are really fativores okay you should be having like almost double your uh say if you're having 200 grams of protein you should have like 400 grams of, of fat or up to that oh to if if your body can handle it but make sure it's not That's rendered hard. fat it's not because because what it is, I'm having the 20 percent fat in mint tea. It's the twenty percent okay. one I'm having, yeah. yeah. And I, and um, when I cook it, I don't add anything extra if, if I, unless I have to. And the weight loss is coming down, and my um fasting blood sugar the next morning is good. When I spoke to uh, um um Dave Mack last year about the pork belly, I was having pork belly all week. Uh, but my fasting blood sugar was 13.0, it was a UK number. But now it's in the fours and the fives. Yeah. All right. Well, that, so, that could be uh, just the pork, though, and, what, and, and yeah. what, um, how you prepare it as well. Are you, are you taking any other fat? Like, uh, do you eat tallow, butter, or anything like that? Right, like before I did the minced beef, before last week, I was having butter, lard, and tallow. Yeah, well, that's good then. But about 40 <laughs> grams. So, so, say, for example, I have eight eggs in the morning, yeah? I will yeah. put in 40 grams of butter with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a good uh, comment here from Jonathan. Uh, he's also a nutritionist uh, from Carnival Muscle. Okay, if she's consuming all that, yeah, all the rendered fat, she should be fine. Okay, I de I just decreased the uh, thousand grams to nine hundred and fifty grams, and nine hundred grams as uh, as time goes on, and her body mass will reduces. Okay. What's that? What, what, what's that thousand gram thing? What's he talking about? Uh, like a kilo of meat, yeah. No, I'm 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 having yeah I'm having a kilo of meat yeah right now a day one for breakfast yeah. no five hundred gram for breakfast and five hundred gram for lunch. Yeah, yeah. So you can reduce that a lot, like a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing if good. You, if you I, really, I, I really feel good having those two, one for breakfast and one for lunch, rather before when I was having the eight eggs a day. Yeah, so it's okay. really, it's really filled the gap of my eating twice a day because before I was eating only once a day and only having fifty to sixty grams of protein a day you see uh, yeah 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 that's not going to be enough then is it yeah if you yeah, need to eat multiple point. meals that's a that's a that's mm -hmm. a good point too is you know sometimes you need to eat multiple meals you know not everyone can do one meal a day yeah um yeah so thank I, you don't you know, I don't meals. think one meal a day should be the goal at all no not at all <laughs> yeah but I'm doing good, guys. Thank I you so much for your support. Oh, it's good. I'm glad to hear it. What was that? Um, nice work. Nice work. That's awesome, Sandra. Yeah, thank you, Dave. A uh, question here. What do you all think of, of organ meats? I like to have liver and beef liver. Not much. I don't fancy organ meats at all, to be honest. Um and I'm glad we don't need them. Um, <laughs> no matter what Gotus yeah. says, <laughs> I don't listen to him. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I don't eat all good meats. I don't like them, so I don't yeah. have them. <laughs> but some people like, love it like and do well. Uh -huh. Yeah. Go, like Joina. I love eating lamb's brains and sometimes I'll have some kidney and liver that kind of a thing but like lamb's brains i think is the thing i crave most when it comes to organs um and years ago when i was living in melbourne i was in cooking school and um i once cooked with um what do they call it uh sweetbreads sweetbreads which is like 
I think the thymus gland or something like that from uh, lamb. And that was delicious. That was so good. Yeah, I really like that. But I don't know that I've ever been able to see it or even purchase it anywhere, that kind of an organ tissue. But um, yeah, the, uh, the lamb brains are something I occasionally will go and, you know, get about six of them in a pack from um, really good butcher. And uh, yeah. yeah, just go to town on that, mix it up with my red meat. But I'll just cook them like as they are whole and then like just have three in one one sitting with some um, red muscle meat and I love it. Yeah, it's really good. I, I, I like um, beef liver. I haven't had any since um, May 2020 time. And I do miss it a little bit because I used to have it with um, minced beef, beef meatballs. But I don't buy it unless I have to. But I do like it when I used to cook it with liver, um, with onions as well. So I do like mm. it. But apart from that, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you like it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating it. Um, the, you, you can get, uh, you can have problems if you eat too much organ meat, such as uh, vitamin A and um, the copper poisoning. But... Um, you know, on a clean carnivore diet, you don't need to have organ meat. Um, for example, like the the Inuit and uh, Arctic River people, you know, they would, with the organs, they would just feed that to the dogs because dogs thrive on lean meats and we thrive on fat. And that we, if you, as long as you eat enough fat, you're going to have all of the vitamins and minerals that you need, okay? Um, but, you know, the, again, you know, if you like, you know, um, organ meat, then go, go, go for it. You know, it's up to you how you eat and what you eat. But like I said, uh, lean meats are not what humans thrive on. Okay. We thrive on fatty meat. And personally, I don't, I don't eat organ meat. Um, and I, I don't, I just don't see the need for it. And I certainly don't have any desire to eat it myself, but you know, each to their own. <laughs> I love eating um, the beef bone marrow. Beef bone marrow is one of my favourite things to eat. So fatty and delicious. Mine. I love it. Mine never really tried that. I, I never tried yeah, but, but, but bone marrow. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's the best. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I think um, in, in our local store called Morrison, they've got something called like that. I might try that next. <laughs> Yeah, give me yeah. UK. <laughs> yeah. I did watch a video, I think, recently that someone spoke about it having um, the vitamin K that we need in it as well. So that's quite Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, like K2, you get a lot of from meat and uh, the fat. So, um, mm. yeah. I don't. I mean, lots of people like eating organ meat. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if if you like that stuff, but um, yeah. you know, you also get everything you need from the fat and the, the muscle meat as well. So, uh, it, and it's again, like you know, finding out what what you thrive best on is um, it's a sort of like n equals one sort of it's something you have to work out for yourself as well. It's my birthday on the twenty seventh, um, DC, and um, oh, I was th I was thinking of for my afters having some ricotta cheese, yeah, mm -hmm. with single cream. Is that a good to do like a kind of celebration yeah. thing? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah why not? So long as it's a bit I've never done it before, so I'm, I'm just experimenting because when I was younger, I hated cheese. So it's only mm. since this year, January, I started eating ricotta cheese and they can look what I've been missing. So I was thinking, yeah. what can I put with it to make it more afters? And last, yesterday, I got some um, single cream. So that will be my afters when I have um, the lamb chops on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah, give it a try. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, a lot of a lot of carnivores still incorporate dairy in their diet, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, as long mm. as you can handle it. Some people can't handle dairy. A lot of people mm. can, and they and they enjoy it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. so there's nothing I wrong with that. Yeah. Still eat uh, occasionally cheese, not not every day, but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I like it. I can't yeah. eat it totally, so yeah, I love it. 
I love the cheese. The only thing I do recommend, though, is you get full fat stuff, none of that low fat garbage. Yeah. Yeah, not the low fat crap, only only yeah. the good fatty yeah. cheese I still do, yeah. and it's still better than eating a bad a bag of chips. So yeah, that's also right. Do, also what, do some snatching on dried on dried sna on dried sausage as well. The car who's speaking now. Raw dairy is good. What's his name? The guy who just spoke in Belgium. Uh, ben. Oh, Ben. ben. Thank yeah. you, Ben. Thank you. Yeah. If you, if you like a, a very good Dutch cheese, take take the Gouda. That's a very good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gouda. The Gouda, yeah. Yeah, I like Gouda. Yeah, cow tongue's really yeah, tongue. filler here. Yeah, yeah they got good tongue. It's pretty good. It does. Yeah, gutan is really good. Especially down the like on the uh, the hot plate on the um uh, the, at the restaurant there. It's great. A flame grill. And, and, Very nice. And also um uh, talking about about uh, liver and all eating. So occasionally I do that and uh, when I was in the UK in 2018 I tasted for the first time the haggis and it was so Ooh. tasty. Ooh. So <laughs> tasty. <laughs> yeah. I know nobody liked it, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, the first time, I and oh, it's very lovely, very lovely. No, and blood sausage, no, I'm sorry, no, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like black pudding, that's good. Oh, yeah. no, no, that's, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. That's another good I'm, thing, I'm, a good point there, you know, like, you know, the UK, they keep saying they're not, uh, we're not carnival, but you know, some of the, the more traditional dishes in the UK, things like haggis, blood pudding and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Not for me, no, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, couldn't. I mm. tried it, so been there, done that. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a bit off-putting, especially you, know, you look at it and you think about what's in it. But, um, yeah, I guess, you know. Well, it, it wasn't even that DC, it was the taste. I just didn't like the taste of it, you know. Maybe it's like Vegemite, you either love it or hate it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when I think it's an, an acquired when, taste. Yes, yes. When last did someone have tripe? Oh, uh, no. Never. <laughs> Not since yeah, I was never. a kid. Tripe, tripe I, I cannot stand. I can't stand the smell of it either. It's, it's a rotten <laughs> smell. Wow. Yeah, no. yeah, I'm not into tribe. No. I was about seven or nine <laughs> last that <laughs> tribe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Memories, eh? Yeah. yeah, the tribe was, yeah, that's not a good memory, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can live without that. Can I have a question, guys? Um, how do you like your eggs in the morning? And if you are lying, how did you like it before? I like mine now, either scrambled or boiled. Oh, yeah. Scrambled. Scrambled? Mindy? I like mine poached. Or scrambled. Poached? Yeah. Poached or scrambled. Poached, yeah. yeah. I like, I like eggs. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Like a scrambled, also with a little bit of of, uh, of uh, cheese uh, with it. Ooh. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Very tasty. Yeah, but a I good fatty cheese, of course. The, I usually fry my eggs in the morning, but I'll have eggs anyway. Love them all. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, same. yeah. I'll, I'll eat the eggs are fantastic. Yeah. I haven't but, tried but, raw but, eggs. What do you think of raw this, eggs? Yeah. Oh, I have raw egg yolks, not the white though. I love the raw egg yolks, and I dip my steak oh, yeah, in the it. Yolks, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Why not the it, it, it was much better than I expected. Yeah, yeah. Dipping, I, I gotta say, like the one, the, the best ways to eat steak has got to be like dipping your um dipping it in raw egg. It tastes fantastic, as long as you got fresh oh. eggs. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's yeah, great. I have, uh, really great. I have, I have a question for DC and uh, Lindy. Did you yeah. ever eat uh, traditional aber aboriginal aboriginal foods? Um, yes, I have. 
<laughs> nice. so it depends on which which one you're talking about. Well, anything, anything what that the original eat, okay, like, yeah, like, yeah. like the worms and all, you know. Uh, like the uh, the those witchy those grubs, fatty witchy. yeah, yeah, the fatty uh, ones. Yeah, they're called witchy grubs. Yeah, I've yeah. eaten one of them. Yeah, and how, how um, does it taste that? <laughs> how was it? It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, I, I've, never actually, I've never actually met an Aboriginal that likes it either. Mm. Is it oh, that worm okay. stuff? Yeah, that worm yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big fat, big fat yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never met an Aboriginal that likes them either. So, um, <laughs> I've had kangaroo. Yeah, I've had kangaroo and I've had crocodile, but um, yeah, yeah I don't true. like those meats. They're very lean, very gamey. Um, oh, okay, and uh, you like, yeah, kangaroos. There's no fat on them at all. Like they just no. so lean. Yeah, and crocodile, mm. and you know, like, they, they they sort of taste a bit like, um, oh, okay. it? like it, they taste like they taste like chicken that's been you know done in the dishwasher. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too fussed on croc. I must admit. Um, yeah. And I've had dugong and turtle, and I hated both of them. Like they're really fatty, but yeah. I just could not enjoy them either. It's like hey, yeah, wow, yeah. yeah dugongs are sweet. pretty popular with the Aborigines because they're they're very fatty, and, and they're sort of nicknamed nickname the sea cows, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, I yeah, I, I've like never it, tried yeah. that one. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you can go past the ruminant animals, really. So. Mm -hmm. um yeah deer and uh beef i think are the best for me anyway uh but every, you know everyone has different tastes and you know, variety is always good so yeah like a good sea cow variety right the spice of life as they say oh that's right that's right you know. i never i I never knew that I would end up loving beef and hating chicken because I'm a Jamaican and we love our chicken. But lately, uh, I got some chicken drumsticks and I hated it, but I love the minced beef now. My taste buds have changed so much because I used to be a chicken wing addict, but I don't like it now. Like, oh, no, I love the minced beef. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It really is. Yeah, chicken's too lean. I used to like, I used to eat a lot of chicken, but um, you know, honestly, I don't eat it at all anymore. I haven't had chicken for uh, over a year now. Um, mm. It's too lean, it's too gamey, and it's too much crap in it. Honestly, what they eat, so mm. it's just not healthy anymore. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember the I last bone time my I had chick chicken. I bone my chicken in the bone broth that I make, so. That makes it more fatty. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah bone broth's good. Yeah, bone broth is yeah. great actually. So, I, I like making um if I if I have scrambled eggs, I like having um chicken stock in with the mm -hmm. mixed with the eggs. Yeah, that's a good um scrambled eggs that way. Plus it's a family that's reunion, also, so yeah, you get them all back together. That's also a thing I don't understand. Eggs are good and chicken is too lean to eat. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's eggs are nice and fatty. So go figure that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey. 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 I'm home now. I'm not on the freeway anymore. So. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's good right. to hear. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's traffic will be safer. Too. <laughs> take out traffic. She's doing it live. <laughs> Yo. That's the way I roll. DC, can I ask you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what if, What do you think about every now and again having a carb day? So nine days um, zero carb and one day carb. Well, it's up to you and what you what your goals are. Um, mm. I personally, I just don't see the need for it. I don't feel the need to do that for myself. I do know other people that do that uh, mm -hmm. and they have good results. Um, Again, if you are on carnival and you need carbs, like some people would like the carb and, uh, to, you know, to um, replenish like um, glycogen stores, you know, and yeah. they'll have some dairy before they go to the gym for like a pre-workout sort of meal. 
Um, yeah. This will help with glycogen stores before they start exercising. So, they, I mean, you know, if uh, some people do that, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, honestly, like I don't really care what anyone else eats. Um, but it, it mm. all comes down to what your goals are and how how much do you want to um, – how dedicated are you to those goals, you know? How important yeah. is it to you personally? Mm. If, mm. if you feel like having a carb day, go for it. Uh, but, again, right. it also depends on the carbs, okay? So don't – that doesn't mean one. like – Yeah. Yeah. So like have white rice or something, for example, or, you know, dairy or yeah. something like that. Um, like that would be Ferding. much yeah. You know Stenna Ferding, his kind of way of eating? You know Stenna Ferding, the white rhino? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stan Efferding. Yeah, I like, I like his approach, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it works for him. As long as it doesn't trigger you to get a roll off the rails after that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if it doesn't if it doesn't trigger you to go start going back to like the Western style diet, like oh, let's have a pizza or let's have some um, chocolate or mm -hmm. something like that, then it's all good, you know. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. So, and you know, Stan Efferton, he knows his stuff too. You know, like, he's a very smart guy. He yeah, is. Um, I like watching videos last year. I think, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it certainly hasn't uh, done his health any about anything wrong either. So, you know, like he's um, what fifty six now, fifty seven, I think. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, still very big guy, still very very much in shape. So, and also yeah. DC, yeah. Um, since we had a conversation, yeah, I googled something, yeah, called the um, retro version squat. That's what I am. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a retro version squatter. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> ah, so, so my squatting has got better. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did a video of my, in my sofa, across the road from me now, there's another sofa. I did a video about it, but I deleted it. And I couldn't mm. get out that sofa. Two days ago, it took me two goals to get out of it comfortably. Two goals because I'm well, doing no. the retro, the retro version squats now properly. Oh, that's excellent! Very good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but but yeah. what's his name? Um, St Sal Stefi Stefano, the pump body pump show. Um, you know I don't know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he nearly got out, got me out of my sofa to do squats. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was your fr it was your friend that got me out of my sofa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's uh, that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about mobility. You know, and longevity uh, mm -hmm. for me, especially. I, I you know, it's movement is so important for and uh, being able to move, being able to get out and, and do things, live your life again. That's so important. Uh, more than yeah. Um, so, you know, so many other things, the aesthetics, you know, 100%. For yeah. sure. Hey, Dave, yeah. uh, Dave Mack, I wanted to say that interview with Anthony, I mean, I loved the first one. The second one I watched um, yesterday and then again today, so good. And I picked up so much gold from that because I've got a gym membership. So now it's like completely changed the way I'm looking at going and lifting. So it's going to be. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good. that's going to be oh, so cool. excellent. And the thing is, I, yeah. I come from a massage background, so I studied, like, physiology of movement and exercise and stuff, and, like, a lot of it just went ting, 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 like, all dropped into place really well. <laughs> I was like, 100% loved it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Really good. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. You, you, you do such fantastic interviews, and I've been loving your lives with um, DC and Lindy. And, Lindy, it's oh. so nice to see you again. I can't believe we met, yeah. like... Over two and a half years ago in like Bella's oh, Steak wow. and Butter Gang. It's so cool, yeah. hey. <laughs> I know. And then we bump into each other on YouTube. It was like, wow, it's been amazing. Like, oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. I was like, yeah, we've got to connect. And when you come over yeah. to Perth, definitely we'll have to go and have a, a meet up here. 
I'm sure, sure your partner's going to have to go and catch us a cray. 100%. Matthew, <laughs> you got to get ready to dive and get in that ocean, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be there Thanks, that Matt. Ocean, folks. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Yeah. Yeah. When you bring your guests back, can you ask them to do a, a video about um, visceral belly fat? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so measuring their visceral fat. You, you know, you, you know when he said he can always tell someone with cortisol dysregulation they've got potato bellies and toothpickers arms and legs. <laughs> so I can do. <laughs> John Omar is another good one to, to watch about the uh, visceral belly fat. So. Sandra, that that's how I used to draw stick figures at school, potato <laughs> bellies in the It was that show that made me laugh. Yeah, I was, was crying up my eyes out laughing when I saw him on that first show. I was thinking, that's me, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting, that's an interesting point, actually, because sure. I work with a lady who is, I think she's vegan or at least vegetarian. I think she's really slim, but she has the hot <laughs> belly thing, and I know why. And I, I'm not game to talk, talk to her about it, but now I understand why that is. You know, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Mm. His sense of humor makes me laugh. His sense of humor, so I'm here <laughs> laughing my head off. <laughs> I still, I, I still having my little belly here, but yeah, I'm also only one seventy two, so and at the still at a hundred kilo, so you can still see that little belly. And even when I'm going to be at 90 kilo, maybe you're going to still see that little belly here. So I don't yeah. think I, I'm not going to get rid of it. But I don't mind. Well, so your long. body naturally yeah. sort of holds on to it, you know, a little bit. Um, and unless you put it into, um, like, you go to extremes, like low fat sort of thing. Um, yeah. But, you know, you really don't need to get rid of it. Um, your oh. body will hold on to what it, what it feels like it needs you know, because it, you store it for the, the cold winters and things like that, you know. <laughs> but just, you know, like, it's all about just let your body do what it naturally does. As long as you yeah. keep eating right, it, it'll um, yeah, it'll do what you want it to do, you know. It's already uh, a, a lot better than before. Like uh, two years ago, that was more like a belly I got. Yeah. And that was a 45 kilo more a bigger belly. Than no, yeah. so uh, that's already a big difference, and I feel a lot better. So I really don't mind that little belly. I don't mind it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that's excellent. Yeah. Right. Dave, Dave, Mac. Yeah. Right. Um, You're gonna make me laugh again, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your guest, Anthony. Yeah. Stop dodging questions because when you ask him, when you ask him how he eats his carnivore, he ends up telling you how he ate yours. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then when he when um he asked you, were you born in the seventies? He didn't give his date of birth or what year he was born. You dodged it. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell him next time don't dodge the question. I, I need to start pinning people down, right? Huh? <laughs> I need I need to start pinning people down on the on their answers, right? Yeah. Because I was I was I was looking for the answers of, of, of our audio. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it. <laughs> and how we eat his carnivore, I couldn't get it. You in between you, you eat your you salmon seeds and all that kind of stuff, but about his, he didn't give it. So next time, tell him answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Dave is that pushy. Dave's too gentlemanly. Like he, he needs to take a few lessons from um Bart K, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> But I need to get in a room with him, maybe. 
dusters. <laughs> and when and when yeah. I asked him how old he was, he didn't tell me, so I, I, I still don't know. But he's between fifty-one and fifty-three. Fifty-one and fifty-three. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be fifty-two, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I am I am between I am between forty and eighty. <laughs> yeah, I'm somewhere in between somewhere in between forty and sixty. So I'm just, doing all right. I'm just starting to reminisce. This feels like sitting around at the pub. I need, I need a gin and tonic. Yeah. You know the great thing? Um, this is uh, like, I can feel like this without actually having a drink. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, cool. well, I've, yeah, I've got my water with me, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as long as you get good, clean water, you, you got everything you need. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. But that was, that was one of the best interviews, Dave. That was one of the best interviews on the 7th of February. I'll never forget it. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Dave has Dave has a lot of great uh, a lot of great interviews actually. So keep watching I that. Keep um, I can't keep up with you, Dave. Bloody hell! Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Dave. I don't know you must be working around the clock. I, uh, every time yeah. I come on come online, I see what yeah, what I see is no Always carb life. Yeah. <laughs> minimum 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 about two uploads every day. I see there's on the yeah, um, on I, this channel. And, and I actually, did my first one. Did my first one yesterday with with Dave. Uh, yeah, I interviewed Ben oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh, hello, Kitty. This is Miso. I have three cats. Miso is is my Ooh. little main man. He's like my little shadow, <laughs> my buddy. Uh -oh. he, just, um, <laughs> he loves he loves to just hang yeah. out and be with the people, don't you, Miso? Yes. Yeah, good on you, mate. How cute. Yeah. It's good to have cats around. He's very. Um, what was that? I've had a good belly workout. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> yeah, laughing is good for that. Laughing is a very good thing in life. It um, is. Yeah. yeah it in, is. The, in the yeah. Bible. In the Bible, it says, laughter is good for the soul. In the Bible, in, in, in Psalms, are any of you Christians? Yeah. Not spiritual. Yeah, spiritual, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, I'm more Christian belief than anything else. Yeah. Mm. I'm, uh, I don't I'm go to Christian, church. I'm Christian, but yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't I'm not really Catholic. I don't to anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. I am Christian, but I'm not Catholic. I don't go to church. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same. Mm. Yeah. Um, Definitely my dream, can't believe. My dream is to have, it's for Dave, mate, to ask me. So, Kim, how did... You find Carnival. How did you find Carnival? Anytime. 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 I have another interview there. Yeah. <laughs> No one's safe, you know. David, Dave is going to buy. I think <laughs> if Dave keeps going, he's going to interview everyone on the planet. <laughs> You'll interview me. Oh, I'll, I'll hit you up for an interview. Yeah. Oh, that'd, that'd be awesome, Drina. Yeah. Dave, yeah, and Dave, Dave, please and Dave. Bill Gates on. Please interview Bill Gates for me. Thank you. Oh, I'd love <laughs> to. <laughs> interview Bill Gates. I've got a few yeah. words. I've got a few words. Dave, when I lose yeah. this weight. Yeah, you got to interview me, man. You got to interview when I lose this weight. It yeah, comes off. Definitely. Yeah, You're looking forward, 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 yeah. forward. And and also also I never hear uh, ap, uh, after that tape ask uh, how do you find ca a carnivore? I never uh, hear somebody say uh, yeah at, at the local butcher. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret some people have taken me literally when i asked that question and kind of like oh, just say something like oh on the internet or something like that you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 
Um, when I first it. discovered Carnivore, yeah, it was on the um the the, the, the podcast of Joe Rogan and, and the Dr. Sean Baker. So I never watched it, but over the over the month, I would I would comment on his channels and other channels, and and I would say, Doctor Sean Baker must be a blood type O, and out of the blue, guess who confirmed that? Doctor Sean Baker. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Your laugh is so infectious, Sandra. I love it. It's very much so. <laughs> so that's that's who started off for me. Uh, of the um, and what happened? I had two weeks on on holiday. It was back in 2019, and um, because of my disability, I can't walk. Yeah, and in a two weeks period, I got out of my bed, into the front door, outside to get the cab. And the cab driver was effing. Like, is that you? Is that you? I lost so <laughs> much weight and I could walk like a horse in two weeks. He was effing and jeffing. He said, You had drunk, girl. You had drunk. And That's I went fantastic. to work, and everyone, I worked work in the call center. A Slimming World consultant who knew me two years before couldn't stop talking about me and said, X, Y, Z about Sandra. I was at a canteen bar and someone said to me, are you Sandra? I goes, yeah, Swimming World guy's talking about you. And it was a two week period on Carnival, but I went back to my old habits in 2019. But um, God, God is giving me to get the backside, you know, to get on with it now. So um, I'm, telling, I'm telling you, God, God is serious because when I was younger, God said to me, me and my mum, 30 years ago, I'm going to be slim. So when you're when you're um because the, the, the life says when the student is ready the teacher appears so that's where i'm now guys yes, <laughs> that's a fantastic story oh, that's it's, really that's good. awesome it's yeah. good to hear yeah all right um okay so i think uh any questions in from anyone if no not, we'll be heading off okay does anyone no questions in the comments? All right, very good. Any um, Australian questions today? Australian questions? <laughs> um, no, <laughs> not today. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go, um, on the uh, if you do have a story that you want to share, um, Dave Mack, obviously he has uh, a lot of interviews. He interviews absolutely anyone. Okay. Um, so, you know, you feel free to give him a, send him an email and find, um, you know, get the, have, share your story with Dave. Um, we also, I also do interviews as well. So if you do have a story you want to share, please send me an email. You're most welcome to. And um, we, we can line up a, a, an interview with yourself. And here is a question. All right. Um, what is in the airspeed of... <laughs> What is the airspeed <laughs> of a uh, unladen, unladen swallow? swallow? Oh, the airspeed. I would say uh, about oh. about that, about the same <laughs> as the swallow. <laughs> I would say fifty miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Monty Python style of question. Yeah, that one is. <laughs> yeah, and and you got that one too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would say about the same speed as a swallow. <laughs> all right. Uh, very good. So we're going to sign off for the night. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. It was a lot of fun. It was great meeting you all. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you too. Awesome. For having any, you uh, <laughs> any words of wisdom for the uh, audience tonight? Sandra, you got anything you'd like to uh, yeah. a, a message for anyone? Yeah. Yes. When God brings somebody into your life, they're known as destiny helpers. It is for a reason and a season. Very good. Very nice. Excellent. How about you, Ben? Would you like to say anything? Yeah. Only need one thing. Stay come up. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with the meat. Uh, Jeannie? Um, just keep going. Even if you don't see the results you want or 
you have a bad yeah. day, just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do yeah, great advice. Yeah. Keep going, folks. Yeah, always keep pushing forward. Drinia? I'm going to second that because um, keep going is my short and sweet mantra. So I really, yeah. I just think it doesn't matter where you find yourself in life, you just keep going until until you're no more, until you've transformed into something else. Isn't that right, yeah, Miso? Exactly. Yeah. Miso's got no words. Usually he's got something to say. But it's quite oh, okay. Big camera shot. Big camera shot, yeah. <laughs> And of course, uh, Dave Mack and the lovely Lindy. Anything you'd like to say before we go? Uh, Lindy, you want to go? Oh, no, just keep it simple and be patient. Just enjoy the yeah. ride. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Yeah, be patient. Yeah. Be patient is very good. Dave? I'd just like to say take one one day at a time. Yeah. And keep on laughing. <laughs> yes, yes. Good <laughs> advice. Absolutely. Keep, keep your sense of humor. Very oh, good. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you all very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a great day, a great night, great week, and a great year. And uh, we'll see you all again very soon. Thank you very much. Right. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thanks.